to the Options Academy. This is the first presentation in a series of videos that was designed to teach you about options and options trading strategies. In order to maximize your learning experience, we recommend that you also refer to our written article, which matches this presentation. Now let's start from the beginning. What are options? In the world of stocks and futures, an option is a contract between a buyer and a seller. The contract gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation to buy or to sell a specific underlying stock or underlying futures market at a later date and at an agreed price. The agreed price is referred to as the strike price or exercise price, and the agreed day is referred to as the expiration date. The strike price is an actual market level, and should the underlying market reach that particular level, the buyer will have the right to exercise his or her option and own a stake in the underlying market from that level on. If, at the day of expiry, the market fails to reach the strike price, the option would expire worthless. Expiring worthless doesn't mean dying poor, by the way, although there's a good chance of that happening if you don't know what you're doing in the options market. The option buyer is not obligated to exercise the option and to take a position in the underlying market and may, instead, exit the position at any time at his or her discretion. For the privilege of owning the option, the buyer pays a given sum of money to the seller. The specific amount is referred to as the premium. An option buyer then always pays the premium and the option seller always collects the premium. If the option expires worthless, the buyer loses that premium and the seller keeps it as profit. Let's talk about calls and puts. A call option gives the buyer the right to buy the underlying market, referred to as going long. A call option gains value as the market rises. A call option will expire worthless if at the expiration date the market trades below the strike price. It will expire with value if the market trades above the strike price. An option buyer who bought a call would therefore benefit if the market rises. An option seller who sold a call would lose when the market becomes bullish. A put option gives the buyer the right to sell the underlying market, referred to as going short. A put option gains value as the market declines. The put will expire worthless if at expiration date the market trades above the specified strike price and expires with value if the market trades below the strike price. An option buyer who bought a put would gain from a move down in the market and an option seller who sold a put would lose on a bearish trend. Let's talk about in at out of the money options. Options have three forms of existence prior to expiring worthless or converging with their underlying market. These forms are referred to as in the money options, at the money options, and out of the money options. These phrases describe where the option strike price is located in relation to the underlying market. A call option is considered to be in the money. If the underlying market is trading above its strike price, it is considered to be at the money if the underlying market is trading at the same level of the strike price, and it is considered to be out of the money if the market is trading below it. A put option is considered to be in the money if the market is trading below the strike price. It is considered to be at the money if the underlying market is trading at the same level of the strike price, and it is considered to be out of the money the market is trading above it. We would like to take a moment and make clear a linguistic point which may cause confusion to new options traders. The issue to be cleared is the use of the term short and long in options trading. When referring to any underlying market, the term long always means buying and the term short always means selling. When speaking of options buyers and sellers, however, the same terminology is used differently. Since an option buyer always pays premium and buys the option, he or she are always referred to as being long the option. Thus, an option buyer might buy a put and be short on the market, but will still be referred to as long the option. This is a source of confusion for many traders because the option buyer is short the market and at the same time, long the put. So here is the distinction that will clear the fog on this linguistic cloud. No matter what position options buyers take regarding the market, they are always long the option. If they are long a call, they profit from a move up in the market. If they are long a put, they benefit from a move down in the market. The same distinction applies to option sellers. 
No matter what position option sellers take regarding the market, they are always short the option. Option sellers will gain from a move opposite to the option's nature. If they are short a call, they profit from a move down in the market. If they are short put, they benefit from a move up in the market. Let's talk now about risk and reward profile. An options buyer's potential profit is considered unlimited and their risk predetermined and contained. The risk is limited to the premium paid at the inception of the trade. Since the option buyer is not obligated to exercise the option and may simply walk away from it, the risk is limited to that initial premium he or she paid for the option. An important note to make of that point is that limited risk status for option buyers ceases to apply under one scenario. That is, in the case that the option expires in the money, is exercised and the trader takes a position in the underlying market. By actually taking a position in the underlying market, a trader becomes vulnerable to the whims and moods of that market. Indeed, only closing a position prior to the expiration day ensures the predetermined limited risk potential for the option buyer. The option seller, however, also known as the option writer, holds the opposite position. The seller assumes an unlimited risk because no matter where the market goes, he or she is responsible to grant the option to the buyer from the level of the exercise price. The seller's potential profit, however, is limited. It is limited to the premium collected at the inception of the trade. It is important to note that an option seller is also not obligated to hold the option until expiration and may close the position at any time. Let's touch on options valuation. Though it is not a main concern for most traders, it is worth being aware that the value of the options is determined by using various mathematical values and other variables. When trading options on futures markets, including the S&P 500 and other financial indexes, the prices of the options are settled and determined at the end of every trading day. Some of the issues affecting the daily option prices are the market movements, bullish or bearish, the volatility levels of the market, and the time left to expiration. One interesting aspect is the variance between the historical volatility and the current implied volatility of the market. In a simplified way, every underlying market has its own history of behavior. The comparison between historical volatility conditions and current volatility conditions can be used to assess the theoretical value of the options. If the historical data of a given market is overwhelmingly that of low volatility, and the current implied volatility is significantly higher than its historical volatility, then the options will gain in value in an uncharacteristic fashion. These options might be then considered to be overvalued. If the historical data of a given market indicates historically high volatility and the current implied volatility is significantly lower, the options would be trading in prices lesser than average and might be considered undervalued. Generally speaking, if there are no fundamental conditions to justify such discrepancy between historical volatility and implied volatility, many options traders may sell options that are overvalued and buy options that are undervalued. How to read an options chain. If this information seems overwhelming, we can assure you that there is no reason, none at all, to be concerned or occupied with the technicalities of options pricing, strike prices, expiration dates, and other logistic details. All this information and more is provided to all traders by the clearinghouse they trade with or the platforms they use. On our website, in the article titled, What are Options? You will find an example of an options chart, also referred to as an options chain. Most options chains are like this one, include details such as the current market level, strike prices of options, description of the option, put or call, the value of e each option as of the settlement of the prior trading day, the most current value of each option, how many days left to expiration, and more. As you can unmistakably see, all the information is provided on a silver plate. All a trader is to do is to choose an option price that matches his or her anticipation of the market and the amount they want to risk and then place the order. Most option chains are identical in nature. If there are any variations, they should be minute and general details only. 
If the format is different, it would nonetheless aim to achieve the same goal. That is to provide the trader the information he or she needs to identify and select options to buy or sell. Throughout our educational program, we refer to the S&P 500 stock index, the multiplier for the Standard & Poor 500. S&P 500 is 250 for the point. $250, that is. Therefore, a move in the underlying market from 1,000 to 1,001 translates to $250. And a move from 1,000 to 1,010 is $2,500. Now that you have a better understanding of what an option is, let's move on to view some of the main characteristics of options trading and of several options strategies. We believe that the two most important aspects of options trading are time and volatility. The options buyer works against time. The options seller works in many ways against volatility, large movements in the market. Though volatility may sometimes benefit the options seller, it is also the most common reason for options sellers' losses. Regardless of our approach, we take great care in presenting the various strategies with little or no judgment. Other than words of caution that derive from our experience in options selling, we leave the choosing to you. Here's to your success. And remember, there is substantial risk of loss in trading futures options. Remember that past performance is not necessarily in future results. Only risk capital should be used. Hope to see you again soon.